What's going on everyone? In this video, I want to talk about API testing and specifically REST API testing. So typically when you're trying to do a bug bounty program and there's an API in scope, or if you're doing a regular pen test for a client, you should be given some sort of documentation. And that typically comes in a Swagger documentation. So you can see all of the put, get, post and etc. requests. And what this is really made up of is a load of open API text that might come in open API format or a YAML documentation format, um, something like that. So this video is me trying to show you what my setup is to go ahead and intercept the request that you make to the API to try and test them. Um, this isn't really about vulnerabilities, it's more about setting up your environment in the best way to test APIs. So for, for example here, let's say you've been given this Swagger documentation, uh, very common to be given that, or you've been given uh, this text here for example, so I'll just go ahead and copy that. My methodology here is to use a program called Postman really good at testing APIs. Um, it's used for development of APIs and I use it personally for testing security in APIs. So to set this up, we firstly want to make sure it works with Burp Suite. So if we go into the settings up here, go to proxy and make sure your proxy settings here match mine. Uh, and obviously the proxy server and port needs to match your proxy settings on Burp Suite which is uh, typically this. You then want to go to general and you want to switch off SSL certificate verification so you don't get error warning messages because it's proxying through Burp. So once you set that up, everything you send through Postman will go into Burp so you can intercept it and test it like you would a real web application. So going back to your Swagger file here, I've copied this and I'm going to place that into the import function here and raw text. Continue. You'll see that the Swagger Pet Store, it, it's, it's, it knows its name and it's going to generate all of those different post, put, delete requests that we saw in the file. So here we've got the Swagger Pet Store environment and here is all the different sections. So um, if we just go back to the Swagger Editor, you've got the pet section, you've got the store section, you've got the user section, and that corresponds to what we've got here. We've got the pet section here, the store section here, and the user section here. So, you're not gonna totally rely on Postman to test all of your API uh, endpoints. You are gonna have to look a bit at the Swagger file to understand kind of how things work. Um, you know, you've got descriptions of what each of these endpoints do. Um, and you can sort of work it out. You know, if it's a GET request, it's probably getting a resource. Uh, if it's a POST request, it's probably putting something new on the API. And if it's a PUT request, it might be updating a resource on the API. So here, you, here you've got GET a PET or ADD A NEW PET or UPDATE AN EXISTING PET. Or here you've got DELETE A PET and it uses the PET ID that is likely given when you add or update a pet. And uh, at the bottom of here, you've got the schemas. So um, we'll, we'll see a little bit of this later, but if you don't understand what one of the parameters that are being used in any of these requests, you can go to the schema and kind of work it out using that. So if we see the ID variable used in a post request, you know it's an integer, so it has to be a number. Uh, the ship date is kind of obvious, but you can see that it's set as, it has to be a date. Um, and status has to be one of placed, approved, or delivered. So we'll, we'll see that in a minute. But going back to Postman, let's just take a look here. So um, I've got my burp suite ready to proxy. If we just go to, say, pet, and we'll get, uh, get pets by status. Um, don't know why there's two statuses here, but we can just delete one of them. So you can see that what's what URL this is, is it's, it's using the parameter base URL. And so this is set at, at an environment level. So if we just go into the Swagger pet store, click edit, you can see here that you can kind of set various things at uh, the environment level. So for example, if the API requires some sort of authorization, you can set 
an API key. So there might be a specific name for that key and then the value might be that, you know, the, the sort of credentials that you use with the key. And that can be in a header or in, in the get query or post query. Uh, it might be a bearer token that you place into there. It might use OAuth, so you have to put all of those details in. Uh, for this case, I don't need to do that. It's not an authenticated API, but that's how you set that to make sure all of the API endpoints that you use will go as uh, an authenticated request. You can also set variables. So we just saw uh, the base URL here. That's set here as a variable, base URL, and the value is the API base URL, which is petstore.swag.o in this case. In your case, it will be probably a development or production API for your client or the bug bounty program. So that's how you set environment variables. Going back to uh, for the example request here, so we, we're using the get request um, to find all pets by status. So you can see that it is using this resource endpoint and the parameter is looking for uh, any available pets. So if we go back to the Swagger documentation, uh, we can see under pet that the status, which corresponds to this, needs to be one of available, pending or sold. So that's kind of how you understand the API, uh, mainly by using the Swagger file. Uh, a lot of the time, clients will have to give you test data because there might be IDs that you can't find yourself or just to make API testing easier, really. Um, so going back to Postman, we'll send that off. And of course, that's going to be sending the request because we're proxying it in Burp uh, as we would with um, a web application. You can see that that request is being sent to the endpoint and the state is available. So we can send that to repeater. And we can see that that query returned the different dogs that are available using this endpoint. So like a web application, you can do things like putting a comma uh, in, sorry, a a quote mark in there to try and test if you get any SQL injection errors. You might want to put an XSS payload in there to see if anything pops there. And to be honest, this video really isn't about what um, what is vulnerable in APIs. It's more about testing your environment. So the point is you can go through all of the different put, get, post requests in here and you know take a look at the, uh, so this is a post request, look at the body. Uh, these are all the parameters that can be sent uh, along with this slash pet endpoint. So this is all example data that you're just gonna wanna get rid of and replace with actual data, which is what I just said. You can kind of look at the swagger uh, schema here and work out that um, photo URLs have to be in a certain format or the name has to be a string, not a number. Um, and then just go ahead and test APIs this way using Postman. Um, I hope that all makes sense. This is the way I do it. So you can try and test for things like IDOR in, in an ID, for example. So your pet ID that you've gained from putting or getting a pet might be 12. Um, and then another user's might be like 15. So you try 15 or multiple numbers to see if you can get access to other users' pet IDs um, and find you know vulnerabilities that way. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, that's how to test REST APIs uh, using Postman, sending it to Burp Suite, and then trying to manipulate the requests. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Give us a like and a subscribe. See you next time. Yeah.